complexities cannot serve merely to exempt all firearms with purported stabilizing braces from classifications as rifles. Indeed, the statutory definitions of a rifle in the GCA and NFA describe that type of weapon as intended to be fired from the shoulder. This thing's not. Evidently, uh, I see that you have a grip on here, pistol grip, so <laughs> it's supposed to be fire from the shoulder. Fire from the shoulder. Fire for All right, guys, KB32 here. Check it out. We're sitting in the Freedom Studios. Man, it has been a while since I've been here, and I'm very excited because, well, we're going to be doing what we do best. We're going to go shoot some. But before we do that, I'm going to tell you a story about the ATF and their uh, big thing about, oh, I don't know, pistol braces and the determination that they have made that it's just basically a way for people to get out of paying that $200 tax stamp. And they go so far as saying so. And also they say that, uh, well, Congress is stricken down and they're getting a little stringent on these firearms being used in crime, which I believe there's only been two. So anyway, it's kind of crock. But before we get started on the ATF, and it's gonna be a long video, okay? But uh, what I wanted to do first is I wanted to recognize a uh, young lady who sent me this little star right here. Now we talked about this previously. This is uh, from Bridge the Gap Shop. And I'm gonna put the link down below. I haven't opened it yet, but I've seen the photos of it. And I'm gonna tell you a little bit about this lady. Her name is Aldra. And uh, just really, really cool lady. Hi, I'm Aldra, and I get to work on wood and sell it online. I wish I could work on wood and sell it online, but they would call that dirty movies. Well, anyway. I went to school for physics and engineering, but sometimes life has a funny way of throwing a curveball at you. Now I'm here doing something I never thought I'd be doing, but I hope it's something that you love. Now, uh, put the link down below to Bridge the Gap Shop. Uh, there is a discount for military and law enforcement and uh, first responders, but I'm going to tell you something. Uh, she would asked if she could send this to me, and I was like, yes, because I, uh, I lost my flag for my office. Uh, in other words, it, uh, it, uh, it's gone. Let's just say that. But I'm really looking forward to putting this behind my desk in the Freedom Office because I know it will always be there because the Freedom Office is my home. So we're going to take this thing apart. I want you to check it out. Go look at her link down below. And uh, every time you see this thing, you'll know that it was from Bridge the Gap Shop. BridgeTheGapShop.com. All right. That's looking pretty cool. So you've got it embroidered right here on the back, burned in there. It's a little hanger with a real wire. American made, of course. Very cool. I'm really looking forward to seeing this. Oh my God, that is gorgeous. Look at that, guys. This is, I think, the bigger one. But man, look at that. Let's see if we can make it shine in the lights. Look at that. That is beautiful. Each individual piece of wood is put in there separately. You can tell she uses staples. Tech, 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 and there's some screws in there. Very nice. Uh, this is all one solid piece. You've got the stars on there and the stripes. So, Y'all let me know what your thoughts are on this thing, man. Very cool. All right, so let's do this. Let's talk about this. Now, like I said, oh, here's a business card. And thank you, Audra. I really appreciate that. It is going to go into Freedom Office. All right, let's talk about this. A summary. The Department of Justice proposes amending Bureau ATF regulations to clarify when a rifle is intended to be fired from the shoulder. And this is what they're doing. They'll say, well, no, that's intended to be fired from the shoulder. Oh, I don't know. It's got a buffer tube on it, intended to be fired from the shoulder. I guess having, uh, I guess, sights on this thing. And by the way, I've got this on here just to help out with uh, some stuff. I'm not going to touch it or anything because you know how YouTube is. But in any case, if you put sights on it, you get a point. If you don't have sights on it, you get a point. The stuff is ridiculous. <laughs> okay, the department proposes factors ATF considers when evaluating firearms equipped with a purported stabilizing brace to determine whether these weapons are considered a rifle or short barrel rifle under the Gun Control Act of 1968 or a rifle or firearm subject to regulation under the NFA. This proposed rule is separate action from the notice that was given back in December. The statutory definitions of a firearm, I'm not gonna go through that. In recent years, all right, here we go. Some manufacturers have produced and sold devices, stabilizing braces designed to be attached to large or heavy pistols that are marketed to help a shooter, shooter stabilize his or her arm to support single handle firing. 
The first individual to submit a firearm brace to determine if it had changed the classification to a pistol advised the ATF that the AR-15 pistol is very difficult to control with one hand precision stance due to the forward weight of the weapon in a recoil of 5.56 or 7.62 by 39. There, the submitter explained the intent of the brace was to facilitate one-handed firing. Uh, according to this individual, brace concept was inspired by the needs of combat veterans with disabilities who still enjoy recreational shooting. Well, according to this, uh, they might as well go ahead and SBR it because you, you're pretty much with the point system, you're, you're pretty much, you're done. Okay, there, the submitter explained the intent. Okay, however, whereas some accessories marketed as stabilizing brace, braces may make it easier for a person to fire a weapon with one hand and would not result in the determination that the firearm was attached, brace is a rifle with the attached brace. Well, there are other accessories also marketed as stabilizing braces that may attach, may be attached to a weapon platform for the purposes of circumventing. No one thinks that at all. These, these things were not put in the market for circumventing the FFA. FFA, <laughs> NFA. Marketing the stabilizing brace to a pistol does not guarantee the resulting firearm will still be classified as a pistol because SBR rifles are among the firearms considered unusually dangerous. Y y absolutely. These things are unusually dangerous. Subjecting them to the regulation and under the NFA, it is especially important that such weapons be properly classified. Yeah, it's properly, we need our $200 tax stamp because uh, the rest of the federal government treats you like a redheaded stepchild and you don't get any money. Um, yeah, the brace is a stock demonstrating the efi efficiency, not the efficacy, as it is written here, uh, short-barreled rifles and equipped with such braces. The GCA and NFA regulate firearms, blah, blah, blah. Accordingly, ATF does not classify unregulated components or accessories alone under the GCA or NFA. However, components or accessories when attached to a firearm can affect the classification of the firearm. One, a component or an accessory likely use, likely use may be relevant in assessing the manufacturer's or maker's purported intent with respect to the design of the firearm and the design of the component or accessory may result in the firearm falling within a particular statutory definition. Examples include the attachment of a Ford secondary grip on the pistol. Notice none of that's on here. Where the resulting firearm would no longer be designed to be held and fired with a single hand. Uh, a wallet holster, have no why, uh, idea. The stabilizing brace of which there are several variations is yet another example of a component or an accessory that's what they call it, an accessory that may change the classification of the firearm to which it is attached. The ATF's long-standing publicly known position is that a firearm does not evade classification under an NFA merely because the firearm is configured with a device marketed as a stabilizing brace and arm brace. No, it is because you've accepted it and approved it as such and allowed these companies to continue moving forward. And that's the key word, allowed, which is a crock of shit. Accordingly, ATF must evaluate on a case-by-case -case basis whether a particular firearm configured with a stabilizing brace bears the objective features of a firearm designed and intended to be fired from the shoulder and is thus subjected to the NFA. That's the whole thing with those guys. If you can put it to your shoulder, regardless of what brace is on it, it's an SBR. And that's why there's no way to get around their little number system. This particular pistol, the only way that it can get around the number system is because I don't agree with a couple of their BS bullshit. This shockwave blade is not adjustable without the use of a tool. It's nowhere near like the SBA-3 brace. It is estimated that manufacturers of stabilizing braces have sold three million stabilizing braces since 2013. I think that number's closer to about the 10 million, uh, 10 million mark. Uh, yeah. Uh, development. And production of rifled barreled weapons with the stabilizing braces has become more prevalent in the firearms industry and that consequently requests for classifications for this kind of firearm design have also increased. ATF has received criticism for not more widely publishing the criteria for not publishing <laughs> Widely public, not the criticism for not. This is directly from their website. <laughs> they can't. I, that's why I said these people can't even write a, a full sentence. Um, 
So anyway, the ATF proposes a worksheet to be entitled Factoring Criteria for Rifled Barreled Weapons with Accessories, commonly referred to as Stabilizing Braces, called the ATF Worksheet 4999. The purpose of this worksheet is to allow individuals or members of the firearms industry to uh, evaluate whether a weapon incorporating a stabilizing brace that they intend to submit to the FATD or offer for sale will be considered a short barrel rifle or firearm. Yeah, okay, so there were a bunch of things that they went back and forth. And guys, this, again, I apologize for this being so long, but it is what it is. Similar to factoring criteria on the ATF 4590, which is used the importation of pistols and revolvers, proposed ATF 499 has a point system. As a preliminary factor when evaluating a submitted sample, certain prerequisites, weapon weight, overall length, will be applied. Uh, as discussed, stabilized braces are originally marketed as intended to assist a person with disabilities and other lacking sufficient grip strength to control heavier pistols. Therefore, okay, Attaching stabilizing brace to a typical pistol where no assistance is necessary, attaching one to a firearm so heavy or difficult to control with one hand handed shooting is impractical or inaccurate regardless of the manufacturer's stated intent will change the design of the firearm into a rifle intended. Yeah. Uh, you put a muzzle brake on there. That's uh, that's considered a rifle now. Yeah, we're gonna have to we're gonna need that two hundred dollars on the proposed worksheet. 499 objective design characteristics or features that are common to rifles except features associated with shoulder stocks. And every time they say features like a shoulder stock, well, I would admit that the SBA3 brace is very similar to a shoulder stock and that it has the adjustable lever, but that's as far as it goes. But they say that they've added material in the rear so that it can be shouldered. Uh, one point for a minor indicator, the weapon could be fired from the shoulder. Two points, moderate indicator, the weapon may be designed and intended to be fired from the shoulder. Three points, oh God bless America, you're going to fire that thing from the shoulder. And four points, geez Louise almighty man, get your SBR $200 tax stamp out because that weapon is designed and intended to be fired from the shoulder, which is absolute BS because this guy right here, I would never fire that from the shoulder. It's a hip fire or it's a just a held it out, shoot it out the window at some, well never mind. In this case, design factors that are more likely to demonstrate a manufacturer's or maker's intent to produce a short barrel rifle and market it as a brace pistol. Uh, yeah, there are certain inherent features that may support a design as a stabilizing brace and also a shoulder stock. For example, a large amount of surface area on the rear of the purported stabilizing brace. The SBA3 brace does not have that space. I don't know where to get it. They actually illustrate photos and show it. Oh, look at all the space back here, the added material so that you can shelter it. It is or it is not. It's just looking at that, you could tell somebody who wrote this thing, as well as the ATF, they probably don't know their head from their hole and ass. Uh, head, ass, and their hole, whatever. However, the characteristic may also result in incorporating substantial stabilizing support. So they start going, oh, wait a minute, well, it could be supportive, whatever. These complexities cannot serve merely to exempt all firearms with purported stabilizing braces from classifications as rifles. Indeed, the statutory definitions of a rifle in the GCA and NFA describe that type of weapon as intended to be fired from the shoulder. This thing's not. Uh, the new Magpul, that is a blade. The only difference is it's a fin. It doesn't have a nylon strap. It doesn't have an elastic strap. It has a pull button on it. They say that the KAK shockwave blade is adjustable. As stated above, in the total point value of the firearm submitted is equal to or greater than four. That means you have to score a total of three. And like I said, <laughs> you get one point whether you have sights or not which means you get a point for just having it, okay? Which is discriminatory in my book, if, that, if you ask me. The, not, the firearm will be classified as a SBR under the GSA NFA and the NFA firearm if the attached barrel is less than 16 inches. ATF Worksheet 499 will provide the public and the firearms industry with a detailed methodology for ensuring legal compliance. Proposed rule, given the public interest surrounding these issues, 
What public interest? Is, who who's interested in these things? Mom's the man action now. Newtown, I believe, and it sounds like it was written by those guys. ATF is proposing to amend the definition of rifle by adding a sentence at the end of each definition. And this is the kicker: the new sentence would clarify that the term rifle includes any weapon with a rifle barrel and equipped with an attached stabilizing brace that has objective design features and characteristics that indicate that the firearm is designed to be fired from the shoulder. Uh, okay, as a preliminary factor, this is all important stuff, guys, and it's going to lead up to where we're going on this thing, so bear with me. I think we're going on like about 15 minutes. As a preliminary factor, when evaluating a submitted sample, certain prerequisites, let's talk about this. Weapon weight. All right, so it goes on to say weapon weight is a key prerequisite in determining whether a stabilizing brace is appropriately used on a weapon. A traditional unloaded 1911 type pistol weighs approximately 39 ounces. This stands in contrast that an AR type pistol, a popular large handgun design, for example, weighs five to seven pounds. What they're saying is, based on the weight stated above, the firearms weighing less than 64 ounces or four pounds weighed with unloaded magazine and accessories removed are not considered weapons suitable for stabilizing braces. Bet you didn't know that, right? So anyway, you get one of these things and it weighs less than four pounds, it's ineligible for a brace. Kind of crazy, overall length. Let's talk about this. You got to be 18 to 25 inches. Other large frame pistols, such as AK 14 to 22. The accessory design, the design of the accessory when attached is a factor. <laughs> Determining whether the item is actually a stabilizing brace or intended to be utilized as a stock. Rear surface area. Rear surface area is designed to characteristics referring to the area on the rear. And you got to read all this crap so that you have a good understanding of exactly what is going on with the point scale. Because literally, when I read the thing, uh, with sights, one point. Without sights, one point. I'm go, <laughs> what the hell? With red dot, reflex sight. It says you, uh, no scopes, no magnifiers, but you can do a red dot, okay? And it's considered a backup iron sight. Or B, backup iron sights, AR-15 style sights. I mean, it's just whatever. Uh, yes, it's got Picatinny uh, rails on it, one point. <laughs> One point, the only rear surface area to shooter's forearm, since the purpose of purpose stabilized brace is to be secured to a shooter's forearm, there is no advantage for a manufacturer of stabilizing braces to include a substantial surface area to the rear of the design unless the brace is attached to a firearm in order to redesign it to be fired from the shoulder. We're going to be talking about that because every time you turn around, they're going, fired from the shoulder. Evidently, uh, I see that you have a grip on here, pistol grip, so... <laughs> It's supposed to be fired from the shoulder. Fire from the shoulder. Fire for effect the reduced contact area to flaps to the shooter's forearms and the surface area necessary to shoulder area necessary to shoulder the weapon work in tandem to indicate whether purported stabilizing brace is in fact a shoulder device. And that's what they say. Any stabilizer brace that incorporates a surface area feature that clearly makes it difficult to use. Okay, so I guess now, uh they should put big old spikes on this so that it's difficult to use because that's the, the new uh, definition. You can't be easy to use because its intent is the shoulder. It's got to be difficult and cause much pain. <laughs> difficult to use, shouldering device will accrue zero points. A stabilizing brace accessory that is designed with only a minimal rear surface, ergo a fin type, with which a weapon could possibly be shouldered will accrue one point. A stabilizing brace accessory that is designed with a rear surface area sufficient to shoulder the firearm or approximately approximating the rear surface of known shoulder stocks, which allows shouldering the firearm will accrue two points. So basically anything the width of the freaking buffer tube. Adjustability. When the ATF was first asked to classify an adjustable, basically remember the uh, you had the round tubes and you had to get the baby powder on there and squeeze it on there. That's not adjustable. Zero points. Uh, one point for this, two points for adjustable, yada, yada, yada. Stabilizing support. To be effective, a stabilizing brace must provide support for the weapon through sufficient and stable contact with a shooter's forearm. Original stabilizing brace design was substantial amount of hardened material. If you remember the big ones that had all the rubber all the way around, well, those are ranked differently on a scorekeeper card versus the SBA-3 brace. Stabilizing support is vital. We're not going to go into it. It is therefore important. I have this highlighted. 
It is therefore important for the ATF to consider the various stabilizing brace designs and the forearm support they provide. The ATF categorized these as counterbalance, fin type, and cuff type. Counterbalance, you know, the J hook, they really like that one. However, when you fold it up, it's designed to be shouldered. Any gun can be shouldered, so that's their thing. If these guys are sitting here like this, they can consider it to be shouldered and they want their $200 tax stamp. Thin type, uh, thin, cuff type, that's the cuff, the rubber goes around. These designs are contoured so the shooter's forearm can easily fit through the cuff. Later designs of the cuff type braces, the SBA-3, possessed arm flaps that lacked contouring and did not provide a suitable opening for the shooter's forearms. These designs relied on softer materials and uh, that while saving on production costs, mimicked the design of popular shoulder stocks. That's a shoulder stock. It can be shouldered. Anything can be shouldered. Uh, yeah, and did not provide the same support for single-handed firing of large handguns. These designs could be secured to the shooter's forearm, but the brace rested on top of the arm and relied on the Velcro trap strap to secure it. The configuration of the weapon, let's just keep going on. Length of pull. Uh, so you got a point system, 10 and a half inches. We covered that in another video from the face of the trigger to the center of the rear point of the uh, uh, stock. On the one that I carry around, the Wildebeest, is 10 and a half inches with the folding. This one is like, oh, I don't know, nine and a half inches or something like that. So it passed with flying colors. Uh, attachment method, the stabilizing attachment method often provides critical insight on how the firearm is intended to be used. I guess if it's not 100% attached, then it could be shouldered as an SBR. Stabilizing braces attached to a standard AR pistol tube uh, will accrue nothing. Uh, use of an AR type pistol buffer tube uh, with adjustable notches an adjustable rifle, the, the uh, KAK, not the KAK, well the buffer tube with the notches that come with the shockwave blade, they consider that uh, adjustable. An extended AR pistol buffer tube greater than 6.5 folding adapters and the uh, use of spacers are all indicated. You get a crew two points. Two points, the points shall be two and no less than two. Peripheral accessories, ATF has examined multiple firearms that include peripheral accessories often add about end users that in indicate the weapon is not designed and intended to be held and fired by a single hand, such as accessories including secondary grips, we always knew that, hand stops, wasn't aware of that, flip up rifle type sights, you know, because you don't want to be able to see what the hell you're shooting, uh, <laughs> sight scopes with limited eye relief, bipods and monopods. Um, bipods and monopods, look at this. This is uh, Death X Square, these guys are Death X Squad, this is a tripod that's perfect for, uh, I don't know, uh, getting your stuff in there and having fun. But I'll tell you what, man, <laughs> she's on there uh, really tight as well. Not made in China. Not made in China. Certain hand stop attachments have been determined to protect the shooters off hand from being placed in front and do not, in and of themselves, redesign a pistol to be fired with more than one hand. However, the presence of such an attachment is an indication that the weapon may not be intended to be fired with a single hand. So your angle four grips, um, oh my gosh, we got to get rid of those because, you know, you can't fire the damn thing from the hip. I fire my pistol with both hands. I fire a pistol with a red dot on it. Not sure where they're going with this. Uh, further, the presence of any secondary grip on a weapon with a stabilizing brace accessory changes the classification. Okay, so you're going to get four points. Four points to the principal's office with you. Installed sights are also indicators as the intended use of a firearm with an attached stabilizing brace. ATF has examined numerous AR-type firearms with stabilizing brace accessories that lack any sight or incorporate rifle-type flip-up or backup iron sights, which are only partially usable when firing the weapon with one hand. That's absolute crap. As such, the presence of these types or the lack of any sight will accrue one point. Again, like I said, if you have one, you're going to get a point. If you don't have one, you're going to get a point. It's just like, hey, where can we find a way of screwing these people out of their ability to exercise their Second Amendment? Firearms that incorporate are designed to rest on a bipod, monopod accessories. Uh, you're going to get two points. I guess a tripod is zero points. Finally, because, you know, if you were sitting, and I don't, at the range, 
and because you're not supposed to have sights on this, I guess, you can sit over here and you can shoot off the, bi mo the, the mo tripod. So we'll just do it like that. Application of the proposed, oh, don't forget, uh, four pounds and then uh, seven and a half pounds. If you're over seven and a half pounds, you got yourself four points. <laughs> Here's the thing. How many LEOs do you know out there going to be carrying around a damn point system to the local range going, oh, what geez, there you you got to, you got to see you got yourself a, uh, yeah, you know, an SBR, potential SBR. I'm going to have to pull you over there and, uh, you know, take care of business. So, yeah, application of the proposed worksheet to common stabilizing braces for the purpose of explaining how the factoring criteria in the worksheet 4999 Yada, yada, yada. An AR type firearm with an SB mini accessory. All right, so this is what they did. They did three different proposed worksheets. There was only one that passed. The other two just failed miserably. One was with the KAK night, uh, what do you call this, the shockwave. The other one was with the SB mini. Uh, and it was a bare firearm, uh, but it passed. So, just saying. One of the reasons the ATF is considering the proposed regulation is the failure of the market to compensate for the negative externalities. Where the hell did they get this? Um, caused by commercial activity, a negative externality can be the byproduct of a transaction between two parties that is not accounted for in the transaction. A negative externality addressed by this proposed rule is that the individuals and the manufacturers may try to use purported stabilizing braces and affix them to firearms to circumvent the requirements of the NFA. Uh, so, yeah, so basically what this is, is uh, it's extortion. It is. So they they allowed this to go on. And then, you know, the ATF, they've, all right, we're going to accept these. We're going to, uh, we're going to make a ruling deciding you can, can use these, attach them to uh, these firearms. And they've been going on since almost what, since 2013? Many, many moons. I, I have many of these things. And I mean, so what, what do you do if this passes? One, I'm going to put the link down below. We've got to make comments. If you made it this far in the video, man, I am dedicated to this thing. They actually give you multiple scenarios. Let's talk about this. Scenario one, turn in firearm to ATF. Option one for current owners. Firearms with stabilizing braces to comply with the proposed rule would be to turn in a firearm with the attached stabilizing brace. Yeah, no. Uh, <laughs> ATF believes it would be unlikely that individuals turn in their entire firearm to the ATF to be destroyed. As the ATF does not anticipate anyone choosing to turn in a firearm, you damn skippy, with an attached stabilizing brace into ATF for disposal, so no cost was attributed to this scenario. And, and they go ahead and they put cost to this thing, and this is the sick part about it, I'm going to talk to you guys about this. Convert firearm into a long barrel rifle. The average rifle cost uh, if you did this, they already did the math, it's going to be $410 to the tune of a total cost based on the fact that they feel like there are, uh, what, what do you say, 3 million? I figured closer to 10 million. The average cost is going to be $125.1 million, which is great if you got the money to go ahead and do that. Otherwise, uh, option number three, apply to register under the NFA, go ahead and throw a real stock on it. Uh, that's going to cost you 200 bucks. I would, you know what, here's the whole thing with the SBR and whatever. I don't want to register anything with the government, uh, but if they would make it easier for the Joe public to do this, it would probably fare a lot better than you had to go down get your picture taken, serial numbers, your ass check, prostate, everything else. Uh, yeah, under scenario number four, permanently remove or alter affected stabilizing brace. You can alter it by putting a strap on it. <laughs> strap on it, you get it. Uh, once you do that, it elevates it or relieves you of a, of a number. Uh, public comments. Here's the deal. The ATF requests comments. Uh, one, how do current owners of stabilizing braces anticipate that they will choose to comply with this stabilizing brace uh, rulemaking if it is finalized. It has to be finalized. It's not final yet. How do manufacturers anticipate they will comply in the rulemaking? Has ATF selected the most appropriate criteria 
for determining whether a stabilizing brace has made a firearm subject to NFA. Hell no. No, 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 no. It's, it's the adjustable part of it. I actually scored a couple of my uh, little AR pistols. None of them came close. Um, this one, if I got rid of the adjustability, it scored a three and a three on both of their forms. So, huh, guys, I've worked all day on this thing just to kind of get a feel, and I read through this the proposed deal ruling in its entirety, and it is so ambiguous. It is so out there on so many different levels that I don't believe the ATF half-heartedly knows what they're thinking or they hired an attorney to write this and they looked at it as if you have a rifle, it is in your, t your intent is to shoulder it, no matter what you have on it. And they don't allow, they basically put you in a position where uh, you, you, can't, you can't make the, you can't get the numbers, the points. You can't get the points to work it out. So what you end up with is pulling the stock off, or you know, you know the brace, and uh, putting it over in the corner. I don't care either way, uh, but I care for you guys. But with that being said, let me know what your thoughts are down below. I know it was a long one. Please don't forget Bridge the Gap Shop, uh, Audrey. Thank you so much. That is a beautiful piece of art. And with that being said, yeah, God bless America. God bless those men, women in uniform, 24-7 for our freedom. Freedom's not free. Y'all be good. I'm KB32, and I am out of here. Boom!